Excellent. Hey guys, welcome back for another episode of We're Working Out at Home. Uh, it is uh, Thursday, and we have another six station um, workout circuit for you. So first exercise for today is jackknife. We're gonna practice plank in the warm up. If you have valve slides, cool. If you don't, uh, paper plates, or I actually uh, ripped up a manila folder yesterday, that was perfect too. But remember for the jackknife, we're gonna be here we're gonna find that belt buckle up, rib cage down, hard uh, locked in core, hover the knees, slide the legs back and keep the hands heavy, and then pull those knees back under the hips. So make sure as you pull the knees back, you don't sink into the low back. Try to keep the core engaged as you pull the knees forward. That's station one. Station two is our first lower body move. We have a back lunge. So if back lunges feel okay, cool. If not, we can always go into a squat or like a kickstand deadlift, just something single leg. But back lunge, my two favorite cues from Coach Fury, find the front foot connection and find the big toe on the back foot. So you can go goblet, you can go sandbag, you can go book bag, any of that stuff, but grip the ground with the front foot and find the big toe on the back foot to make it repeatable and solid. Third move, we have our walkout two. So regular walkout, you walk out to a plank, walk out two, feet stay stationary. You're gonna step to the left, back to the middle, step to the right, back to the middle, and then back to your top. So same thing as the jackknife, making sure the core stays engaged. Uh, fourth move, monster walk. So if you have a mini band, put it on the legs. We're gonna pretend like we're in a crawl space. Stay low, drive the knees apart as you go. If you don't have a mini band, Carry is perfect, and again, book bag, uh, sandbag, goblet weight, any of that stuff would be perfect. Fifth move, bent over row. So an, ex an exercise I'm excited to uh, demonstrate for you. A few different options. Obviously, kettlebell, uh, yesterday actually we did it, and we used a kettlebell kind of bottoms up, and I'll show you that. But if you have a book bag, this is okay too. We're gonna to go into a little hinge like a deadlift. And then from here, we're gonna pull the book bag apart, press it down and row it to our body. Obviously, if you have weights, totally cool, but it's the same idea. We're keeping that hingy position as we row. Uh, yesterday, we did it with a kettlebell. We held it bottoms up, but then we held it here. Pulled the handle apart and row the bell to our belly. So a cool way to get a bent over row uh, with only one weight. Last exercise is just something explosive lower body. So kettlebell swing, sandbag clean, or chop and pop. So uh, chop and pop, start in that deadlift position, hands right in front. You're gonna swipe the hands back into a hinge and then drive through the floor and lock out. So make sure the hands don't go too high. You wanna end the hands at the highest shoulder height. So swipe back and then into your lockout. So those are our six stations. I know we kind of breezed through them, uh, but that's your stuff for today. We're gonna roll into the warm up. So we have just breathing first. So whatever your favorite breathing position is, I support you. It could be crocodile breathing, it could be commando breathing, it could be breathing on your back, uh, legs in your hands, feet on the floor, any of that stuff is totally cool. One of my favorite breathing positions recently is the commando rock breathing. So hands and knees, Knees a little bit wide, down to the elbows. Find a few rocks and find that bottom position of your rock. And then that's your breathing position, or that can be your breathing position. But we're still breathing in and out of the nose, tongue is against the roof of your mouth, behind your two front teeth, all the positive things. There you go, Lisa. Excellent, guys. So let's get like three, like three more breaths. Again, just in and out of the nose, nice and gentle. Oh, sure, no problem. Thank you for the, uh, the, uh. All right, when you finish your breath, we're gonna go uh, Spider-Man T-Reach. So one knee up and one knee down. We're gonna take the front foot and bring it way out in front and then bring the hands to the floor and the back knee goes back. 
From there, we're gonna tap the foot. That hand's gonna reach across the body, deep breath in, and then exhale and push the ground down, rotate towards the ceiling. Inhale all the way back down, exhale and rotate. When you're doing this, any kind of T-spine rotation, whether it's bretzel or uh, tactical frog T-spine rotation, let's get one more there. Uh, make sure that you're using the ground to your advantage. So push the floor away to push you into the rotation. Don't just turn your body. That means you're probably going to engage the core a little bit more effectively, and you're going to get more of the rotation from the places it should be going from, as opposed to finding compensations from uh, going into extension. So same thing on the other side. Deep breath in on the way down. Exhale as you rotate. For here, I'd love to see breath in and out of the nose. Let's get like one more, and then we're going to be on our back. So leg lock bridge next. We have um, back lunge, so I love doing either a, a, a bridge if it's a squat or a single leg bridge if it's a lunge. So feet are together. We're going to hug one knee. And you're just going to keep it close-ish to the body. Don't let it float away from you. So hold the, the leg snugly, grip the floor with the planted foot, and then push the ground down to bridge up. Inhale on the way back down. Exhale as you push. And one of the things I've been paying attention to on this is as I bridge up, I'm being mindful of where my other hip is in relation to my pushing foot. So don't let that hip lag behind. Try to make sure that it's in line with your other hip when you get to the top of the bridge. Let's get one more and switch. So again, hold the knee close-ish to your body. You're gonna grip the floor with the planted foot and then push the ground down. And at the top, make sure the hips feel like they're on the same plane. So don't let one kind of lag behind or get too high for that matter, right? Let's get one more there. And then we got plank. So you can watch me real quick. My favorite little plank progression. So this is going to be the core feeling we're going to find in the jackknife and the walkout too. We're going to go on the elbows. We're going to bring the hips up and keep the toes dug in. And then from here, we're going to tuck the tailbone and clamp the rib cage down and then just drive through the heel. So now my core is engaged, quads and butt are tight, and I don't know if you can see it, but I'm shaking just a little bit. So that's what we're looking for. So whenever you're ready, starting on the belly, toes are dug in, elbows are slightly under hips, or sorry, elbows are slightly under shoulders, raise the hips, turn the belt buckle up and clamp the rib cage, and then drive through the heel to find quads and butt. You know, in this move, like a breath or two, maybe three, and then you can rest. And let's get like three of those. And just mem like memorize, find one part of the movement that feels a little bit foreign. So do you feel more like rib cage? Do you feel lower core? Do you feel obliques? Do you feel some of the core on the outsides? Remember that feeling, and that way when we go into the walkout or into the jackknife, you have something to reference that allows you to know if you're in the best position possible, um, you know, just in case you're doing this at home without a coach. Uh, next exercise, half kneel press out. So if you have a mini band or a book bag or a textbook, Chloe, let's grab uh, some kind of object just to press away. Per water bottle would be perfect, Lisa. So mini band is around the wrists, or if we have a bag or a ball or a textbook, it's in your hands. We're going to squeeze it. We're going to kind of push the front foot down to get it heavy because that's what we're going to find on the lunge and then press the weight away. Make sure as you press it away, you don't feel like you're starting to lean back away from it. Keep pushing through the floor. And as the bell or weight gets farther away from you, that's when you want to bring more tension to the floor to engage the lower body and the core more effectively. So that kind of like front leg butt should be on fire a little bit. Let's get uh, one more and then switch sides. Excellent. So one knee up, one knee down. You guys are all look great. Push the front foot down. Let's get like one more there. And then we got some lunges. 
If lunges don't feel good, body weight squat is totally cool. So same, same idea now. So let's uh, set up, if we're gonna do squats, let's get the feet connected to the floor. If we're going to do a lunge, let's get the front foot connected to the floor, and then we're gonna lunge back and find the big toe, and then pull down into that lunge, and then pop yourself up. So it doesn't have to be that slow, but find that front foot connection, keep it heavy as you lunge back and find the big toe, and then pop yourself back up. And for this move, I don't need you to go all the way to the floor, so don't think that you have to go into full range of motion. Go into whatever feels comfortable for you, and that's fine with me. If you're alternating, keep alternating. If you're doing one side at a time, switch sides. And there's no right or wrong, right? If you're doing one side at a time, then you get to practice the move. If you uh, feel confident with the exercise, alternating is now a way to kind of uh, challenge the body a little bit farther. Let's get maybe uh, one or two more, and then shake it out. My friends on the YouTube, thank you for joining us for today. That's your interval workout, six stations. You're gonna do two to three minutes at each station, uh, one minute in between to rest. Uh, do that and then a finisher, you're good to go. Thanks for watching.